why are measurements typically going to be continuous? Well, here's a deal. Hmm? They change? Well, they do change. But more specifically than that is a measurement can get more and more specific depending on your measuring tool. For instance, right now, how hot do you think it is outside? 95, great. I have no idea how hot it is. So 95 is a great answer. It could be 63, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but let's say it's 95 degrees outside. Fahrenheit. Um, is it exactly 95 degrees outside, do you think? I mean exactly. If you went out there with a thermometer, do you think it's going to be exactly 95 degrees? No, probably not. It's probably like 95.1. But here's the, the thing about measurements or continuous data. There's an infinite number of possible possibilities that it, it could be. For instance, between 95 and 96 degrees, do you have to be either 95 or 96 degrees? Do you have to be 95, 90, do you have to be right in the middle of those two things? So here's the point about continuous. Between any range of numbers, continuous has an unlimited number of numbers between there you could pick. For instance, you could be uh, between 95 and 96, you could be 99, 95.1. Do you get it? Could you be between 95 and 95.1? Whatever you pick, could you be between that number? Whatever you pick, could you be between that number? on your measuring tool, you can get very, very specific and keep getting more and more specific. Does that make sense? You can't count all that up. There's an infinite number of possibilities within there. You can't go and say, oh, it's 95, 95.1, 95.2. Doesn't make sense because there's values you could be within there. Are you kind of getting the difference here? Number of eggs is easy. There's one or two eggs or three eggs. Uh, measurements are not easy. You could be 14 inches, 14.1 one inches or somewhere between there or any number of possible values in that range. Are you seeing the difference? I know it's, a, it's tricky for some people, I do understand that. But if you think about it, measurements are things that are continuous because there's an infinite number of possi possible answers you could get depending on like your measuring tool. You get very, very, very specific uh, between values. I'll show you one example between inches. Let's say this is a ruler, one inch, two inches. You're measuring something. It could fall, here's 1.1. Again, you could be anywhere in here, right? But if you say, here's 1.01, you can still fall within there. You can still fall within there. You can get smaller and smaller and smaller. Therefore, you can't count them up. There's an infinite number of possible values you could potentially be. That's why it's not discrete. It's continuous. That's our separation data. How many people understood what I just talked about? Good. Okay. That's very good. So we can put things like this. Temperature. Temperature's a good one for continuous state. No worry, we're almost done. I know that this is getting a little bit uh, a little bit too much vocabulary for you. I know there's a lot. It's how the whole first chapter is all vocabulary. Do you feel comfortable about qualitative versus quantitative? You should know the difference between being able to categorize them. Can you do that? Tell me when something has, deals with numbers where math is meaningful, or when something deals with numbers but math might not be meaningful, or just categories of stuff. You got that down? Within this one, that's, that's all there is. Qualitative is just qualitative. Within quantitative, we've got two different scenarios. You could be discrete, just count it up, or there's a finite number like the dice. You know, there's only six sides of dice. That's all you could be. Or continuous, infinite number of possible values. These are usually measurements. This is usually counting. Typically, that's what that is. Now, we do have four levels of measurement that we're going to talk about. Uh, I think after that, we'll, oh, we'll be pretty much, pretty close to done after that. I'm going to switch colors just to change things up a bit. Because you look so excited. So far. So our four levels of measurement. The first level of measurement is what we call nominal, nominal level.
the way I like to think of this, nominal kind of means name. It's by name only. So when it, oh, I forgot to do that. Just put your put your initials next to your name for today's date, okay? Initial it. I know I put a check mark, but make sure you have your initial name. You can still sign if you're on the wait list, okay? So nominal, nominal is like what it implies, just name. It's just categories only. So nominal data is by categories. You really can't put it in an order. All you can do is list it out. Some people have a hard time thinking of what in the world could be nominal data. Well, we've already talked about some of these because qualitative and quantitative, quantitative can be categorized using these measurements also. Uh, but religion, can you put religion in any order? Not really. I mean, you can't say religion number one is blank. Religion number two is, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to do that. So an example of nominal data is all you can do is ask someone, well, what's your religion? None or this or this. You just you can just list them, right? You can't put them in an order. You certainly can't do mathematics on them. Are you with me on this so far? So nominal refers to just categories only. It's not ordered, something like religion, or race, or gender. The next one is called ordinal. What do you think a keyword in ordinal is, huh? Ordinal. Yeah. This is data that can be ordered. Can be ordered. The thing about ordinal, though, though, is that while it can be ordered, the differences between the, the categories or the numbers don't mean a whole lot. So differences are meaningless. I'll explain that in a second. Differences are meaningless. Let me give you a for instance. Let's say you had, uh, you had four cars in a race. Okay, you had four cars in a race. And you start this race, and you, because NASCAR, by the way, is like my favorite thing in the world, I love NASCAR. Do you like NASCAR? Shame on you. Shame on you people. It's the best sport ever. It's a sport. So it's not just an activity. So let's say these four cars start the race, and they're all going around the track, and of course we're going to get a rank out of this, right? One car's going to come in first, and then second, and then third, and then fourth. True? Can those be put in order? Sure, so it's above nominal. It's above just, there were four cars. There was Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Mark Martin. All Hendrick drivers, by the way, in case you didn't know that. Uh, so these four guys drove, but there's going to be a rank. Someone was first, Jimmy. Someone was second, third, and fourth. But does that ranking tell you how much better Jimmy did than Jeff Gordon, time-wise, or something that's relevant? Well, he tells you he was one step, one level ahead, one order ahead, but does he say, oh, this guy finished two minutes ahead of Jeff Gordon, or five seconds, or .2 seconds? Does it tell you anything like that? Mm -hmm. So I really don't know how much better, besides the rank, Jimmy was than Jeff. It doesn't tell you any of that. You can't subtract them and say he will, because these cars might not even finish. Right? Maybe this guy completed one lap, two laps, three laps, and all 50 laps, and he came in first. It doesn't tell you any of that information. So if I subtract... One from two, all I get is they had a difference of one ranking. That doesn't tell me anything about how they drove or the information about them. Do you guys see the difference there? So whereas they can be ordered, the differences are meaningless. Something like rank is good for that. Rank's an example. I have another one for you. Um, in science, can't you rank colors up on the... Uh, the spectrum scale, can't you do that? You can put them in order. Can you subtract blue from yellow and get green? Or yellow from green and get blue or something like that? Can you do that? Please answer me because I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> can you do that? 
Can you subtract red? Red minus orange equals seven. Or purple. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So colors are something according to the spectrum scale or spectral scale. What is it? Spectral or spectrum? Spectrum. With an M. Where they can be ordered, not just by name, but they can be ordered, but you can't subtract them. The differences are meaningless between them. Do you guys have a good feel for nominal versus ordinal data right now? Are you sure? If, if you have questions, then by all means, ask. I'm here for that. Okay. There's two more. Next one we have is interval data. It can be ordered. It can be put right in order. The differences are meaningful. But there's no what's called a natural zero. I'll explain that in just a second. Here's the concept of a natural zero. A natural zero means that if you get a zero, you have absolutely none of that quantity, whatever you're talking about. That's what a natural zero means. For instance, I'll, I'll give one away in the next one. If you have a bank account and you get zero, do you have any money whatsoever? No, you don't have any money whatsoever. Now, I'm going to give you this question. Let's say we're talking about Fahrenheit, temperature. If your thermometer reads zero, does that mean the absence of all temperature? No, I mean, there's still a temperature, right? The temperature just happens to be zero. It doesn't mean there's no heat whatsoever. We're all dead. It just means that's the reading on the thermometer. It's kind of a sliding scale, isn't it? I mean, if you considered a different temperature base, the zero would change a little bit. That means in Fahrenheit, zero is not a natural zero. It doesn't mean there's no temperature whatsoever. It just means the temperature happens to be zero. You can go above that or even below that. Do you see the difference between something that has a natural zero and something that doesn't? Nod your head if you do. Natural zero means there's nothing there. Uh, something that doesn't have a natural zero would be something like temperature, where the zero, yes, it says zero, but it doesn't mean there's no temperature anymore. It just means that is the temperature. It doesn't mean there's no heat. It means there's still heat. Just, that's our reading. So temperature. Oh, and differences are meaningful here, aren't they? If I took 95 degrees minus 60 degrees, that's a difference of Fill in the blank. I don't even know what I said anymore when I said. Maybe you're right. 90 minus 60, did I say that? 90 minus 65? Yeah, 25 then. Whatever it is. That difference in temperature tells you something, right? It tells you a, a, a scale-wise version of how much hotter it is today than it was um, this morning, something like that. So the differences are meaningful. Of course, you can put things in order. 95 is hotter than 60. Things like that. The last one we're going to talk about, I'll put it over here so you can read it, is called ratio data. 